It is a sunny day and it's freezing. I mean, it's January 23rd or 22nd, I can't remember which. But, um, but basically the river's been frozen up for quite a few days now, but it is gonna get to the freezing mark today, up to the freezing mark. It's been minus 12, minus 16. But, uh, but we're supposed to get to zero today. So, um, so anyway, it's uh, you know, nice to see the gulls getting a little warmer. That was breakfast. Lasted 10 seconds, I think. But um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful, even on a cold day. But, um, but stay warm wherever you are. It's another kill opening. Sorry about this. I've been doing kind of a lot of them. I'm trying to do some videos on making things too, and I've got three on the go. But um, but the kilns keep unloading, and I keep I keep finding things that are worth looking at. So so anyway, um, it's Vaughan Smith Westco Bell Pottery in Canada, Nova Scotia. Uh, it's have a look down here. I got two of them to open actually, so we'll see what else is fun. This was a commission. I don't use wax very often, but that's nice. Somebody wanted to have a bare spot in the bowl. So variegated blue above and below, oatmeal in the center, and a little bare spot on the bowl. I don't use wax because it stinks when you fire it. Yeah, but I have that ventakiln there, but I still feel bad when I'm pumping the air outside with wax in it. So I've always been a bit sensitive about uh, the fumes. Uh, so I had three of these. They only want two, but I made a spare. They might want more one day. But anyway, that's those ones. I always make spares because, you know, somebody will buy the other one eventually. This is the summer dinner set. So uh, now flat work doesn't run like you find on a vertical form, like balls or bugs. So these ones are gonna be a little bit more predictable, I would think, but it is the same colors as those balls. And this is recycled clay, and look, a little cavity opened up that's too bad mm, this one's nice no no pit holes in that one at least but uh, now this was fired down to 22 uh 20 no 22 15 i think it was i'll have a look on the i'll do the review at the end but that's nice so the the recycled clay isn't bloating occasionally like it did i showed you on another piece and you can see it comes out that sort of toasty brown color which is quite nice so this will be sitting next to my Icelandic pieces. This one's nice. Well, it did have some crystals coming in the gray area up there. Let's put this, I think it's uh, shrinking down a little bit. There you go. I'm holding it out of the screen. Anyway, so some of the crystals are kind of formed in the variegated blue where it overlaps the actual, uh, let's see, that would be variegated blue apple green and then the two oatmeals yeah so where it overlaps the green you have some nice crystals there yep, six pieces six plates hopefully i'm gonna have four good plates of each so i can have a dinner set oh that is very nice too and this is the wobbly rim plates that i do i should go through these fairly quick since they're repetitive that's a good one there's the other size um and here's the other size. So we got uh, three different pieces to make a little setting. I know there's some mugs somewhere in here. Another one, it was good to fire these on each shelf. I could get one of each size on each shelf. And um, well, that's just a mark in the glaze. The speckles come through sometimes kind of dark. Yep, that's another one. And there's another one. And there's my fourth. So we have definitely got four place settings. Oh, and there's another little cavity there too. That's 
probably salt pellet that came in from outside and the salt vaporized at that temperature, I suppose. Um, but there you go. So I have four place settings. Oh, look at this one. Oh my, oh look, and it did do a bit of a run. I have to grind a little bit, but look at this. I did my test pieces with, uh, I don't know, I'll have to look at the, the profile for the firing because that run is really good and the crystals came out really nice. Oops, I was going to put it on my vertical. Then another little bit of grinding on that one, but it came out the same. So I'm trying to get that, it happened in the summer in the gas kiln outside and um, I slow cooled this I remember doing that at 175 degrees an hour from peak temperature 2220 let's say down to 1750 with a half an hour soak and that's why we got a little bit of running because I got a lot of soak and there was also a I think a 20 minute soak at top temperature but those are beautiful and consistent and this one didn't run much just a tiny tiny little bit so look at that beautiful blue in there It's shinier than in the gas kill. And these are orders. So this was an order for somebody. This is an old piece I did with the bear, uh, Tenmaku gold. So the flex were nice in these. I think I made three or four of these. She wanted a two or three of them. So I think she'll be quite happy because They've turned out less oatmeal in some of them than the other. The oatmeal on the rim, on some of them, seemed to fade in. I was trying to hold them in there a little longer this time, so the oatmeal didn't fade into the glaze as much, but those are really nice. I think she wanted four, or three or four anyway. So that's really nice. And the Tenriku Gold isn't running, so it's the variegated blue on the other ones that make it run. Yep, there's the variegated blue running down again. So that takes no time to, go, to grind that off. But look at that blue. Tui! Back to some, uh, oh, that's on there a bit tight. Uh, Icelandic colors. The frigid north. We should start calling it none of it since I'm Canadian. Actually, I'm British, Canadian, American, I guess. I've lived in three countries and I have three citizenships. How does that work, 007? Yep. There we go. Yeah, these colors, I'm going to start doing my variegated blue with the gray on the bottom because I like it better than I've been doing it. I was doing uh, the variegated blue on the bottom with the, with the gray, mouse gray, up higher, but I actually really like it when it's the variegated blue over the oatmeal where the hill is. Same again. And now you get a preview. Maybe I'll have to post this video after I've done this. I'm doing a video on carved pieces. So I glazed a whole bunch of these in variegated blue to show the carving. And these are the ones I'm doing the video with showing those uh, diamond core tools. And I do like the diamond core tools. They're very nice to hold. So I was just free carving with these just to see what they could do. And I did a whole bunch more. These are not the ones I did on, on tape. 
these are the ones I was practicing with. Variegated blue is a great glaze over carved pieces. And also, there's a green I had, and I don't think I have it anymore, that was really good over carved pieces. There you go. So variegated blue is the glaze with oatmeal on the bottom. And then... That one's going to be grinding. Annoyingly, the stilt collapsed underneath it. So I can grind that off. And these are for mugs for the gallery, basically. But the blue is very nice. Bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Turquoise. And my uh, just my yellow oatmeal, I think, over the top of that one. Variegated blue with the yellow oatmeal over the top. I'm so, I sold out of all my Nova Scotia mugs before the Christmas. I, I write La Have Nova Scotia on some mugs and they were all gone. I right, to quickly do some more. And we have Dr. Strang here in Nova Scotia, who is our chief medical officer, and so I do the Nova Scotia Strong instead of Strang mug. It became a thing, still is a thing during the COVID. Oh, another blowout in that one. Salt probably from outside. It's a shame. I can probably reglaze that one though, I think. I start taking my shoes off when I come into the studio these days with all the salt on the bottom and I have a, a clean pair of studio shoes. That one's very pretty. Bright blue, variegated blue with oatmeal. Everybody should get themselves an oatmeal glaze. And I've given all the recipes out. So they're all on my video on oatmeals. Tenmaku gold on the bottom, folk art white with my apple green on the top. This is the bright blue with the, sorry, the turquoise, blue, green, copper, red with the yellow on the top. Tenmaku gold, folk art white with apple green again. That's a good combination. Same again with the Tenmaku gold, folk art white, and apple green. Ooh, wow. Same glaze combo as in the other kiln. This was a, uh, I'm not sure, let me press the preview. Here's the cooling, the, the firing cycle for this Tenmaku Gold. Okay, that's the Everything is the same except for the the cooling pro part of it, ramp 5. Ah, this was not quite. This was 5 degrees cooler as well. Oh, same cooling cycle. 30 minutes soak. Five degrees difference. Huh. And that is just so little difference. Unbelievable. Same again. And there's the 
same. The Tenmaku goal has gone semi mat. You can see it on the bottom here. Tenmaku gold has actually gone semi mat in this cooling profile. It is very nice, but the blue has been taken over by the crystals from the actual Tenmaku gold. Variegated blue with my yellow oatmeal over the top. Bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal over the top. Bright blue all on its own. Bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. There's the comparison. So bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal on the left hand side. And this is my Tenmaku Gold refining video because it gives you so many variations. So just to get off the start quickly, all of the pieces are starting on the left and going through to on the right where I think it's working perfectly. So I'm gonna tell you what I did. You'll see my hand coming in. <laughs> That is the firing schedule and it's called program three. First segment is 250 degrees an hour up to 1040, no hold. Then segment two is 150 to 1140 with no hold. Segment three is 250 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, no hold. Segment four is 108 degrees Fahrenheit to 2210 and then hold for 15 minutes. And then segment five is 175 degrees down to 1750 with a hold of 30 minutes. And this did not work as well as I'd hoped because the blue is not visible. And so that was, if you want to just have a very matte effect, it seems to have gone quite matte. The second one... is to the same program all the way up to uh, segment four um, when it went to 2220 so 10 degrees hot hotter with a hold of 15 minutes so same hold and then segment five was 225 so a faster cool down to 1750 with a 30 minute hold again so this one has a little bit more gloss in the tenmaku gold which is obviously working very well let's hold it by the handle holding it very, you yeah, know, there's just a really nice matte oatmeal kind of effect, but no blue. All right. This one the same again, 2220 for segment four um, as the top temperature with a hold of 30 minutes. So I increased the length of the hold uh, and then a 275. So a faster cool again down to 1750 with a 30 minute hold. Uh, and it actually started to get some blue. Not on this side. I'll explain that later as well. But on this side, we started to get a little blue showing up. So obviously it meant the, the longer hold and uh, may have started to make that variegated blue uh, come out a little bit. Um, but, uh, but the Temuco Gold is beautiful once again, just really nice. Program three was the same up to the fourth segment where I went up to 2225, so five degrees hotter and a 15 minute hold, so less hold, but five degrees hotter. Uh, and then at uh, segment five, I took it down 450 degrees an hour. Uh, so much faster cool down to 1750 with a 15 minute hold. Um, and we get lots of blue. So a little bit hotter and we get lots of blue, but on this side, it's still a little matte. I'll explain that part right now. It's the bit where there's no elements in the kiln. This is facing the door, 
and there's no elements there. So it stays a little cooler facing the door of the kiln because it's a test kiln. Uh, and wherever there's elements, it's actually much hotter, I guess, and therefore the blue comes out more. So that told me straight away that where it's hottest uh, is uh, where the blue shows up. So let's turn this one around to the more blue. This one I did program three again um, as normal and then ramp four was where I changed it again. So 2225, which is the same as the last one. Um, and I did only a slight longer hold at the end of the firing program on ramp five, just to see if the hold would give me anything different. Um, and it changed it a little bit. So the top temperature is the same on this, but look at the beautiful texture. But once again, facing the door, we have it more matte, but there's blue there now. So even higher temperature, 2225, gave us a little blue, even on the cool side, but just really beautiful texture. So that's a really nice mark. If I hadn't ended up with that every time, I'd be super happy. And then finally, I did 2223, so I lowered the top temperature just a touch, um, and I just tried a 20 minute hold again uh, for the actual, to see if there's any difference at all. So there's very little difference in this one, because I'm very happy already, I'm just tweaking it at this point. Um, but basically, we get the same beautiful effect uh, of that blue, but we still get quite a bit of subtlety in the color of where it's not facing the elements, but still that's pretty as well. Um, so, so I'm very happy at this firing around that temperature, uh, which is about 2225 20, for the actual top temperature, which I'll leave as the, as say this is the best. And then basically um, a fast cool down to uh, 1750, uh, 450 degrees down is pretty fast cooling. Okay, so what do we have to finalize the video? This one and this one. So what do we have difference here? Well, I took it up to 2230 with a 15 minute hold, which 2230 is only two degrees lower than a, a traditional cone six. Um, and then I uh, slowed the cool down a bit. So instead of 450 down, to, uh, I took it down to 300 degrees an hour, down to 1750 with a 15 minute hold on that one. Uh, on this one, it was 2220 again uh, with a hold of 15 minutes and then 300 degrees down to 1750 with a hold of 15 minutes. But what's the difference here? Let's put those down. This one still has the mat because this was fired in the test kiln. So we still have the mat facing the door. So we're confirming that the door of a test kiln is cooler, um, but you still get that nice blue color wherever the elements are with some beautiful shaped drips where the fluting is. So I really love that. The one on the left was fired in the big kiln, just under the, this firing schedule that we've got here. Um, and the difference, of course, is in a big kiln, the heat is much more even. So everything was the blue. However, we lose the definition of this. So in the big kiln, because the heat is much more even, I was very interested to see that the oatmeal melted into the glaze much more. Uh, and that isn't what I want. I want it to be like this one. Um, so we've still got some tweaking to do, um, but this uh, will give you a lot of firing schedule information so you can try and get these glazes yourself and I'll post the recipes right at the end of this video. Um, the clay I used was 455 speckle from Pottery Supply House, but any speckled stone wet clay should work for this fire to cone six with some tweaking. All right, thank you very much.